Hey everybody, welcome back to another video and welcome to the almost ghost town of Thurman, West Virginia. Now I say almost because it still has a population of five people. In fact, it still has a mayor. I'm not sure where everybody lives though because I don't see any houses and there's not really much around. Uh, behind you is actually a Thurman train station. It's an Amtrak station, but I'm not sure who gets on and off here if there's only a population of five. Over here is a U.S. Postal Service uh, building. I'm not sure if it's abandoned or not. I'm going to go check that out. And then farther down the line are about three or four abandoned buildings um, that used to be a bank and I, I believe a couple of hotels. Now, I know I'm supposed to be a landscape photographer, but one of my other passions is photographing anything old, whether it's an old building or old church, a derelict building, you know, just anything that has a bit of history to it. So I haven't done a vlog on it, so I thought while we're here in West Virginia, we would photograph some of these old coal mining towns that used to be boom towns back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s that have fallen on hard times. So I hope you follow me and Joanna along as we explore Thurman and then a couple other coal mining towns here in the hills of West Virginia. So I don't know if you can see what's etched into that building, but it's the National Bank of Thurman got that gray etching into the granite stone. I guess this town used to be booming enough that it actually had a national bank. <laughs> um, but looking at it now, you would never know. Uh, but things were a lot different back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Yeah, it was a one, two, three, four-story building. I was looking around to see if it had the dates that they were built on them, but I don't see that. We're gonna try to cross the tracks. There's some information in the window of this uh, middle building here. So behind me is an old coal filling station and it was built in 1928. I'm not sure how long it's been abandoned, but basically what it is is back in the old days when they used to run steam engines, the steam engine would pull in there and they would fill it up with coal to power the steam engine and it would be on its way. Uh, like I said, I'm not sure how long it's been abandoned. It's about 100 years old, uh, but I never knew what a coal filling station was until today. Learn something new every day. And this is why we should not tear history down. Leave it up, put plaques up, learn from history. Now, after we left Thurman, we traveled about 75 miles to an old town called Alderson, which was settled in 1777 and incorporated as a town in 1881. Now, the best story that I could find about Alderson was back in 1890, a traveling circus came through town. One of the lions in the circus was pregnant and she ended up giving birth to five cubs here. Now, unfortunately, four of the cubs died and the remaining one was left in Alderson. Legend has it that the young cub was allowed to roam freely around the town, even playing with the town's children. Until one day a traveling salesman came face to face with the lion. He panicked, as we all would, jumped into the Greenbrier River and swam across, found a doctor and fainted. Now because of this, the town council was forced to pass a law that no unleashed lions were allowed to roam around Alderson anymore. And I guess to this very day, the law is still on the books. Hey everybody, welcome to Bluefield, West Virginia. This town has amazing history. Bluefield sits on the world's largest deposit of coal, and like everywhere else in West Virginia, coal was the major industry. In World War I and World War II, all the coal that was mined here in the Bluefield area was dedicated to the navies of the United States and the United Kingdom. In fact, it became such importance to the military that Adolf Hitler put Bluefield, West Virginia on an airstrike list that he had. If he shut down Bluefield, he shut down the coal production, he shut down the navies of the United States and the United Kingdom. I think old Adolf was dreaming, but uh, yeah, this town was absolutely booming back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. In fact, they built a bunch of high-rise buildings. Unfortunately, now they're mostly abandoned. Another fun fact about Bluefield is that back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, Bluefield had more millionaires per capita than anywhere in the United States and also had more automobiles per capita than any place in the United States. And who would have thought that? You would have thought New York or LA or Detroit, but yeah, it was here in Bluefield, West Virginia. Yeah, amazing history. Joanne and I are gonna go walk around a little bit and photograph some of this uh, amazing old architecture. And then we're gonna move on to uh, another really small, interesting coal mining town called Welch, West Virginia.
Hey everybody, welcome to Lewisburg, West Virginia. Uh, the reason we stopped here was because they had a Civil War cemetery. In fact, we're standing in front of a Confederate mass grave. Uh, for those of you who don't live in the U.S. or don't know U.S. history, the Confederates were the Southern soldiers who fought for the, uh, the, the South, and the Union fought for the North. During the Battle of Lewisburg here in 1862, the Northern soldiers, the U.S., had the high ground here on the top of this hill, and the Southern soldiers were down, down the hill, but the Southern Army opened fire on them, and you know that never goes well when you uh, don't have the high ground. 95 Confederate soldiers died. The Northern general didn't want them to have any kind of recognition associated with fighting for the South, so they were just buried in a mass grave down the hill until the war was over, and then they were transferred uh, up here. It's, a, it's actually a beautifully maintained cemetery, and in today's climate of tearing down our history, whether it's good history or bad history, it's nice to see something that is maintained and taken care of. So like I said, there's 95, the remains of 95 Confederate soldiers here, and this mulch here is in the shape of a cross. Can't tell from this uh, this vantage point. So I'm gonna to try to put the drone up and see if you can see it from above. Amazing American history, good or bad. It's uh, part of what shaped our country. All right, we're gonna move on to our next town now. So we made it to our final destination today, which is Welch, West Virginia, another coal mining boom town back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, just like uh, the last town we were in of Bluefield. With the mechanization of the coal mining industry, they didn't need as many people to do the jobs anymore, so they, they flayed them off and people went elsewhere to look for work, and those jobs were never replaced here in, in uh, Welch. We're standing in front of the Browns Creek District High School. Browns Creek District High School, and it's been abandoned a long time. Not sure how long, but back in Bluefield, we found a high school that had been abandoned for 65 years. So it's kind of a testament to exactly when and where the coal mining industry bottomed out here in West Virginia. Again, their peak was in 1950, and then by 1960... Well, John F. Kennedy was on the campaign trail, and he came to Welch, and he saw the poverty that was here. <clears throat> he realized that this area was providing more coal than anywhere else in the country, but there, more people were on food assistance than anywhere else in the country. So during his administration, the very first food stamps were created. And it was a family here in Welch, a family of 15, that received $95 um, in 1961, I believe, as part of the, their assistance, and it never stopped. To this day, they still have that assistance program. It just keeps progressing. There's nothing, there's nothing here. There's no jobs. There, once the coal and the steel companies moved out, nothing was provided to fill those gaps. And driving here between Bluefield and Welch was some of the most abject poverty I've ever seen in my lifetime. It's unbelievable that people are allowed to live in those conditions and that there aren't jobs for these people. It's, it's just eye-opening and makes you very thankful for what you have and where you live. But yeah, we're gonna wrap this up. I really hope you've enjoyed this. Look around Southern West Virginia, a little bit of history from it. Really is beautiful and incredible and sad and tragic at the same time. There's not gonna be any award-winning photography in this, uh, in this vlog. We've had nothing but blue skies and haze from the wildfires still. Hope you enjoyed a look at some of the old buildings and the old history uh, in this area. It's really, like we said, just been eye-opening for us. And we've had a great time driving around, learning more about part of the country we really didn't know anything about. All right, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the video today. Anybody who's not subscribed, if you liked what you saw today, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. We'd love to have you along for the weekly landscape photography adventures. All right, everybody, have a great week, and we'll see you next Monday. Bye.